I've labored, no, labor's not the right word. I've toiled over this word. Can I just, I just want to share some stuff with you. Like God's laid a word on my heart this morning and I would like toiled with it. You can ask Amber about it. Like I, I kind of started writing it down and I was like, I don't know if this is actually God. Maybe this is just me. And like, I don't know if this is right. Like people, people may not like this word. There might not be enough revelation in there because who knows? We like, we are a church that likes revelation, not information. Amen. And so my heart is to always bring revelation to you guys and to just grow together and see the kingdom of God expand. Amen. But as we've been focusing on this, this theme of experience and just what it is to experience God, what it is to experience Jesus, you know, experience the Holy Spirit. And I'll just keep coming back to the, the rawness of the beauty of Jesus. That's not the title of my message, but I just, like, I just keep coming back to, to Jesus. Like everything starts with Jesus. Is that right? Now, this might just be revelation for me, and I do really apologize because legitimately this, this message is actually revelation to me. So if you're ahead of me, then praise God, let me get around you and learn some stuff. Because like for me, this was crazy stuff that, you know, we all understand the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah? We, we, we acknowledge the power and the authority of the Spirit. We know that signs, wonders, and miracles flow with the Spirit, yeah? But that can only happen when we acknowledge Jesus first. So Jesus has to be placed in his rightful place. We have to have a, a raw experience with him. You see, a lot of the times, um, in the, especially in the New Testament around Acts, where obviously the Holy Spirit was poured out and the New Testament church started to grow, um, a lot of the times when the, the disciples and apostles um, shared a message and it said thousands believed that day and were baptized by the Holy Spirit. You see, the amazing thing was, yes, they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, but first they believed. So first they encountered Jesus. Is this okay? I just want to bring us back to the rawness of Jesus. And so I've entitled this morning's message, Moving in Experience. You know, moving in that experience, the experience we've had, the experience we, we, we have each and every day. Because who knows that this, the experience we have at salvation, that's not the only experience we're limited to. Amen? So we can have an experience with Jesus every single day. Every single day. And so I feel like one of the words God's given me is like, yesterday's shower is not good enough for today. That might be for some people, some teenagers, but for me it just doesn't work. I need a shower like every night. I can't hop into bed without a shower. Is this making sense to anyone? Hallelujah. And so... The experience we have with Jesus at salvation, there's more to unlock in him, if I can say that. So yesterday's experience with Jesus may not necessarily be enough to sustain today. And so the more we are, uh, acknowledge him and encounter him, the more we believe in Jesus, the more power of the Spirit flows through. Can you see this, this conduit, I guess? So let's just pray and let's get into the word. Father, I just thank you so much right now for your word in this place. Father, I thank you right now, Jesus, that you just come. Come and just be with us, be within us. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you right now in this place, that you are going to flow so freely, that signs, wonders and miracles are going to come forth from this place. God, we just worship you, we acknowledge you, we thank you that you're here right now, that you're going to speak through me, that God, I'm your vessel right now, Father, that People didn't come to hear me speak, God. They came to hear from you. I pray, God, right now, I just move out of the way for you to do what you do, God. Come and just touch your hearts. Open our hearts to you right now, Lord. I pray, God, I do this word justice, Father. The way you've laid it on my heart, God, let it come forth right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So if you've got your word, let's open up to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. You know, when... um. Amber and I found out we're having a boy. I actually said to Amber, I really want to call him Jose. And Amber said, that is a, that's crazy. That's a ridiculous name. And she's like, well, why would you want to call him Jose? I said, just for the value of saying, no way, Jose. <laughs> like, to me, that is just, like, call it a, a dad joke, but that would, like, make my day every day. That would be today's shower for me. 
Let's read the word. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Someone say they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. This caught my attention. Not so much the the second half, but this first sentence. My people are being destroyed because they what? Lack of knowledge. They don't know me. And so as I'm reading this, I was like, oh, God, I don't know if this is, like, this is pretty brutal. But then in Proverbs 29, 18, in the Amplified Version, it says, where there is no vision, listen to this, no revelation of God and his word. The people are unrestrained, but happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. You see, we can hear a lot of great things about Jesus. Amen. We can watch a great lot of preaching and podcasts on Jesus. Yeah. We can feed ourselves and listen and hear to great testimonies. But have we encountered him? Do we actually know him? Are you, are you hearing me this morning? Like, we, we, we hear all about this stuff, but, but do we actually know him? Do we actually believe in our hearts? You know, I know this Jesus. You know, for me, I can say, you know, I know this Jesus. I actually, I, um, when I first encountered Jesus, I was seven years old. I was at, I'm pretty sure, I don't quite remember, it's a bit hazy. My memory, my memory is pretty bad after like 10. But um, I was about seven years old, and I'm pretty sure it was a Benny Hinn um, convention. You all know Benny Hinn? So we're, we're sitting there. There's, to me, it seemed like tens of thousands of people. It was probably only like a few hundred, maybe a thousand. But as a little fellow, it was a lot of people. And my whole family went there, and, 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 and Benny's preaching the word. And then he says, I believe people are being touched by Jesus right now, and I want to give opportunity for you to meet Jesus if you just raise your hand. So I just raised my hand because, like, this sounds really cool. Like, legitimately, this sounds awesome. But you see, can I just pause there? See the heart condition? This wasn't a heart condition of, well, he's saying put my hand up, put my hand up. Or this isn't a heart condition where my friend's nudging me, so I better put my hand up. Can I just be real? This was a heart condition of legitimately, I want to I wanna meet this Jesus. Like, like this guy was running around the, the podium. He's like, like not standing still and there's stuff happening. And I was like, man, if this Jesus is doing this through him, I want some of that. And so he's like, all right, if you put your hand up, come forward. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and I'm like nudging Dad. I'm like, Dad, I just put my hand up. And Dad's like, that's okay, mate. We'll, we'll all go. And so the whole family come up the front for me. Like legit, this, this, is, this is a picture of the body of Christ. Come on, get this. When one, put, when one responds, we all respond. When one wants to experience we all experience. And you see, that moment, that heart condition, I encountered something immense that night. Now, I can't put it into words, but something shifted on the inside of me. I knew I had just experienced something that was outside of my understanding. And so this, this man, I'm pretty sure it's Benny Hinn. I'm going to be really careful because this is pre-recorded. My mum's going to give me the ring and be like, no, you foolish little boy, it wasn't that. Anyway, this um, minister is now prophesying over me. He says, son, I see you with a shepherd's heart and you're going to pass the people and lead many to the Lord. Now, for me, I was like, I was seven. I was like, well, how, how does that even look? Like, I don't, I don't even understand what a shepherd's heart is. Does that mean I'm going to be a farmer? Like, that's honestly what I, that was my thinking. But you see, it was later on in life, the prophetic word that was spoken into me was what, when I started to understand it. When I started um, in youth ministry and then uh, Mark Ironside took me under his wing and started uh, mentoring me. And he, he um, exposed me to people like Clark Taylor and Neil Myers um, and all these men that, that encounter Jesus and operate out of the Spirit. And so what Jesus was showing me is that too many people have heard about me, but not many people know me. Can I say that there are a lot of Christians that have heard about Jesus, 
but they don't know him. You might be here this morning and be like, you know what, I actually don't know if I know him, which is fine. This was one of the reasons I believe Jesus laid this word on my heart because there are, there are legitimate believers that don't actually know him. So I want to pose you a question. What does your Jesus vision look like? What does your Jesus vision look like? Because Jesus wants to give us a vision of himself. Listen to this. Jesus wants to give a vision of himself. He wants to reveal his fullness to us as a body of believers. The thing about Jesus is Jesus doesn't go, well, I'm just going to show you my pinky because I don't think you're ready. No, no, we go, Jesus, just show me your pinky because I'm a bit scared. Is that true? Is that true? No, Jesus, I'm a bit unsure about this. This is a bit unknown for me. Just give me a little taste. And we, we are the ones that restrict God. But Jesus shows us a pinky and we go, I've seen the whole lot. And so we operate out of this experience, which isn't a bad thing. That's still Jesus. But I want to tell you there is more. There is more of God to be poured out. There is more of Jesus to give you revelation. He wants to take you from what you think you know to an absolute assurance in Him. Hallelujah. Oh. And so we've got, to, we've got to get to a point where we want to encounter Jesus in his fullness. Where we say in our hearts, you know what, that sounds awesome. If this Jesus is able to do this kind of stuff, that's what I want to encounter. I want to encounter the loving Jesus. I want to encounter the healing Jesus. I want to encounter the powerful Jesus. Come on. I want to encounter, someone give me another word. I want to encounter, what's a characteristic of Jesus? Britt, help me out. I want to encounter the honor of Jesus. All these things. And so, like I said before, yesterday's shower isn't enough for today. We need to be seeking an encounter with Jesus daily. We, we legitimately have to become aware of his presence. Encounters happen when we become aware of his presence, when we acknowledge him because Jesus is everywhere, yeah? Jesus is actually in us. The word says it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The name which is above every name has been given to me. So when we become aware of that, when we start speaking into that, Clark Taylor always told me the way you encounter Jesus in his fullness is you intertwine your DNA in his. And what, what is that? That's simply acknowledging him. Jesus, I know you're here in this place. Jesus, I know you're inside me right now. I know even though physically and mentally I don't feel it and I don't know if you are around me, I know in my heart that you died for me, that you live in me. It's no longer I who live, but I actually have sonship, that my identity isn't Jesse known as a sinner because who knows as humans, we are sinners. But my identity is in sonship in Christ, that it is no longer I who live. So the sin and the flesh, even though I still do it outwardly, that has actually died and Jesus isn't concerned with me as a physical being. He's interested in my heart. So what does your Jesus vision look like? He wants to encounter us. He wants to give you something new each and every day. And so one of the things we've got to do is we've got to be intentional in encountering his presence. Can I just say, I think a lot of us as Christians, and I'm going to share a bit of a testimony with you. I think we, we, we understand so much of the power of the Holy Spirit, but I believe we're actually we don't actually encounter the fullness of the Spirit because we're forgetting to acknowledge Jesus. So for me personally, obviously I was, I, I was saved. I had an encounter with Jesus. And then my neck, like from there on, once I started um, in youth ministry, is I started being exposed to the move of the Spirit. So I started delving into that because it's exciting. When you see miracles, when you see tangible miracles, it's exciting, Yeah. So I started diving into that and I just I was hungry for more of it. And it's good to be hungry. And you see, it wasn't until we actually moved here and I said to Amber, babe, I just want to create 
time for the Holy Spirit to move. And God said to me, Jesse, the Holy Spirit will only move when you acknowledge Jesus. The Holy Spirit only fully moves when you acknowledge Jesus. And you know what? For me, I was like, I don't even know what that looks like. I'm just being real with you because I was just so used to operating in the Spirit. I'd flow in the Spirit and the Spirit would flow through me. But there is a, there's more power to be released when we acknowledge Jesus. So this one night we get together and we just put some worship music on and we just started worshiping. I kid you not. Now, this is my testimony. Take it how you want it. I was at the feet of Jesus. I just knelt and I wept and I wept and I wept. Amber was beside me and she's weeping as well because we could see the same thing. God had brought us into his throne room and I was just kneeling. If I could just paint a picture for you, I saw like these massive steps, right? Like, you know, Eliezer, when he has to climb up steps, you've got to put your whole body onto it, yeah? You've got to use your arms and your legs to get up each step. This is what the steps are like and I'm climbing up these steps and like my heart was like I could see Jesus and I was like, I am... I'm going to beat his feet. Better, what's that scripture? Better is one day in his courts. Better is one day in his courts. I was like, God, if I can just be at your feet, like forget about everything else. I don't care. I just want to be at your feet. And I climbed those stairs and I just knelt at his feet and I wept. And I could feel his, I could feel his feet. Like I was resting my face on his feet. And you know what happened? Where they're weeping and all of a sudden Eliezer rolled off the lounge. And so straight away our attention stopped on Jesus and it focused on Eliezer. Why? Because Eliezer's well-being was a preference. Write this down. We encounter Jesus when we choose presence over preference. When we choose presence over preference. Now, I'm not saying it was a bad thing for our attention to change, right? Because he's, he's our baby, hello? Like, pfft, we need to make sure he's okay. But you know what? The, the, the presence of God was so thick. Who knows sometimes when you've encountered Jesus and you get distracted and it's like, it's gone. Or some, some so-and-so nudges you or something and pulls you out of the presence and you're like, you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you're legitimately upset because you're like, I was experiencing something and then you, you lovely person, pulled me out of it. So all of a sudden our attention shifted. We come out of the presence of God. We move away from his feet. We check on LEAs. And you know what? He, like, can I just be honest? It was like, boom. Like, so we were like, like, I was like, man, he's like, like he's concussed or something. Anyway, we roll over. And he just kind of rolls over and just like goes to sleep. And Jesus is like, I've got it. Come on, get this. I've got it. Presence over preference. Because too often in our Christian circle, we all want his presence, but we've all got our preferences. Oh, we've all got our preferences. No, no, God can't do that because that'll take too long. No, no, God can't do that. Come on, you may not say that, but in your heart, when we start restricting how things are going to be or how things are going to operate, we're choosing preference over presence. We're saying, no, no, I'm not, I don't actually want the presence of Jesus right now because I'd prefer to be home in time. Oh, no, no, no. I actually don't want his presence right now because I'm hungry. I wonder what they're serving. After the service, Jesse, would you please be quiet and hurry up? Let me tell you, it's pea and ham soup, so it'll stay warm. (laughs) Come on. So we get in this mentality that even though we're hungry for his presence, because who knows, we want a move of God. Hello? We're hungry for a move of God. Can I be real with you? I'm desperate for a move of God. I can't keep functioning like this. Church is not meant to be a club. But we're trying to choose preference over making people happy rather than his presence. Where if we just have his presence, his presence will be their preference when they encounter him. 
My Bible tells me in Acts, thousands of people believe that day. Why? Because they were hungry and they chose his presence. My Bible tells me Peter spoke for so long into midnight, a young fella fell out of the window and died. So Peter went down there and rose him from the dead and people were like, oh, awesome. He went back up there and kept preaching because people chose presence. We have to be a church that chooses his presence over the preference of what we consider better. Because too often when we're in his presence, the enemy will try and put a preference on us. The enemy will try and get an Eliezer to roll off the lounge to grab your attention. When we're in his presence and we're praying and we're worshipping, too often a distraction comes to take us out of the presence because we have a preference of our best friend. We prefer to say hello to, the, to our friend coming through the door rather than saying hello to our best friend, which is Jesus. We choose preference of not moving in the Spirit, not laying hands on people, because we'd prefer not to offend people rather than entering into His presence where more and more people come. The Bible tells us that people would bring their sick out just to get the shadow of Peter. Is that presence? We choose preference to look prim and proper rather than the presence of God and being foolish before him. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? David danced. What did he have on? Let's just say, you know what, just for anyone who's religious out there, let's say David was fully clothed. Is that okay? Let, no, come on. He's fully clothed. And everyone's like, I just can't picture that. My, I just keep seeing him in his undies. No, no, he's fully clothed, okay? I'm David. Okay? Oh, I'd love that anointing, just saying. I'm David. Okay, I'm fully clothed. What did he do? What was it that he was doing? He was dancing foolishly. You see, you think it's all funny and, oh, look at this idiot jumping up there and clicking his toes. (laughs) But you see, why did David dance? (laughs) Because the presence had just came in. We've got to get to a point where we're willing to get outside what this prim and proper, I've got to look nice for church, look. And, and I'm just going to stand there in worship because I've got to look right. Choosing preference. Can I just be real? We're choosing preference over presence. And when you move in experience, when you move in that encounter God's given you, when you move out of that. So when I come to bring the word, I'm moving out of seeing his feet and I'm saying, Jesus, what else can you show me today? What more can you give me revelation of today? I'm willing to look foolish because I want your presence. I desire your presence. I'm desperate for a move of God that I'm willing to look foolish Because something shifts when we decide his presence over preference. Something shifts when we go, you know what, I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance for his glory because I just, I want his presence. Something shifts when we go, you know what, I choose to give an unnatural response to the kingdom of God. Because I want his presence. I want his presence. We've got to get to a point where we operate out of his presence. But we will never be able to operate out of his presence whilst ever we choose preference. You see, we can't even enter into his presence whilst ever we have preference. Because the whole time, it's just Jesus' pinky. The whole time it's just Jesus' pinky because we're trying to operate out of preference of what we prefer 
to have or what we'd prefer to see when Jesus is saying, I've got so much more. I've got so much more. You see, revival in history happens when people desire his presence and when people start to operate outside of what they prefer, outside of their prim and proper self, revival happens when we decide to look foolish before the king. There is nothing more that Jesus loves than to see his, his sons and daughters, his brothers and sisters dancing for joy for him. Because we're his children, hello. You know, my, my greatest joy in life is when I can dance with my daughters. And you know what? I might look ridiculous and I might be incredibly unco and out of time, but they love dancing with me. And it could be to any song, anything we put on when we just dance. And so this is what I want us to enter into with our king. Jesus desires to see us dance for him. Jesus desires to see us choose his presence over preference. And it's time for us as the church to come back to his presence. And the reason I I toiled with this message so long is because I know I'm pretty well speaking to believers. And so for everyone, it's like, well, you know, I've encountered Jesus, you know, like being there, done that. And it, it almost becomes like this old hat thing. But Jesus wants to encounter us more and more each day. Can I just say that there is even new revelations for believers? In Acts, turn with me to Acts chapter 10. I'm going to read 9 to 16. This is Peter speaking. This is where Peter. Now, this is, just let me draw a picture for you whilst you turn there. This is the Peter who people bought their sick out for his shadow, okay? This is Peter that when a serpent attached to his hand, he just flicked it off. This is Peter that had revelation of the power and authority in the spirit, amen? Look at this. Acts chapter 10, 9 to 16, it says, The next day, as Cornelius' messages were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean. If God has made it clean, the same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled to heaven. This was fresh revelation. Someone say fresh revelation. In my opinion, from my natural man up to this point, I would have seen Peter as having it pretty well all together. You know, after Jesus rose and the Holy Spirit was poured out, this is the bloke that people, they wanted him. If there was someone that was going to preach a message, they wanted Peter. If, someone, if they wanted someone to heal the sick, they wanted Peter. Is this true? Peter, Peter was essentially the leader of the apostles. Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. So he's saying that you are anointed to lead out this move. But you see, Peter needed fresh revelation. Amen. Peter still needed to understand that when we choose presence over preference, our preference says, no, no, I can't eat that. Come on. My preference says, I can't eat that. That's... From my law and my tradition, that says no. Preference says the law and tradition of church says we don't do that. Our preference says this isn't what we've done before. This is not how it's happened before. This is what, how it's never operated like this before. Tradition says that we should have it this way. Preference. Preference. 
presence says, come and eat. Presence says, kill and eat because what I have deemed clean is clean. Presence says, what I want to speak to you, I'm going to speak to you in my fullness as you open yourself up to my presence. I think the most important thing that we need to understand is, yes, the Holy Spirit is our weapon. He's our comforter. He's the power. But Jesus, he's our saviour. Everything is possible because of what he did. Not only did he take our sins, not only did he forgive us, but he gave us his righteousness. 1 Corinthians says that we may become the righteousness of, of Christ. But you know what else Jesus bore? He bore the rebuke, the ridicule, and he actually bore his disciples ditching him. So if you ever feel alone, you ever feel like you're on this journey on your own, Jesus has been there. There is legitimately in history nothing Jesus didn't actually go through. So he is our source. And when we understand that he is our saviour, can I just make a statement here? It's very interesting. Sharing your faith may open someone's heart, but sharing Jesus is what gets them saved. Sharing Jesus is what gets them saved. Sharing your faith in what you believe and what you've seen and witnessed, your testimony may open their heart, but Jesus is the one that saves. Come on. And when we start to get that into alignment, when we start to fully understand and comprehend that it's Jesus who saves, then we can actually, we can get people saved and baptized at the same time because we're acknowledging Jesus first and then the fullness of the Spirit flows through. Can you just see this, this, this imagery I'm trying to paint for you? Because when we put Jesus in his rightful place, it actually unlocks the bigger potential, the bigger power for the Holy Spirit to flow through. Now, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit doesn't flow anyway, because the Holy Spirit always operated in me. But there is more power to be released when we acknowledge Jesus. I want to look at some areas in our life Actually, I may not even read it. But who knows the story of Daniel in the lion's den? And so Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Why? You all said you knew the story. He broke the law. He prayed when he was told not to pray. Can I just say it's so interesting. Something that caught my attention was at the start of this story, the... the um, the chief administrators and all that of Darius come to Darius and say, we've decided. Did you get that? We've decided. Why did they decide? Because Daniel had favour. He had favour because he desired presence. So even though he was in a, a country and a region that was against God, he operated in the fullness of God, knowing that he preferred presence over preference to the point that everything he did gained him favor with the king. So then all of a sudden the administrators say, well, this guy is climbing the ladder and he's, he's basically, he's going to be above us because the, the king had plans to set him as chief over the whole land. So they said, we've got to do something. But they couldn't find fault. Why? Because he chose presence. When we operate out of presence, people can't find fault. This is truth. This is, this is biblical. Hello. So what did they say? We've decided to make a decree, but we need you to sign because you're the king. Isn't that interesting? This is the perfect picture of presence and preference because preference will say, we've decided we shouldn't do this in church, but we need the hierarchies to sign off on this. But when we say, no, no, we're going to operate out of presence, nothing can be brought against us. But as soon as we choose preference, that's when we get ourselves into trouble. So what did Daniel do when he found out? He still went and prayed, didn't he? Three times a day, he opened his windows to, to Jerusalem to pray. 
And these fellas knew exactly what he was going to do. They knew his routine. So what they do, they just went there and waited for him to start praying and then went and told the king. And so Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den. Now, I don't know how many lions there were, but it was a den of them. Yeah? But the fact of the matter is, now the Bible doesn't actually describe sort of what Daniel went through. But can I just, like, my opinion, this is just Jesse's paraphrased version. But Daniel being in the presence of the Lord, just chilled. He just sat there. These kitty cats probably came and laid up beside me and gave him a bit of a rub. Like, oh, come on, I'm being real. This is what happens when we choose presence. And you see, too often, as believers, because, <laughs> because we don't actually know him in his fullness, we get thrown before lines and we start trying to declare stuff, but we're declaring it off of what encounter? If we haven't had an experience with God, then we can't, we're not actually declaring things out of the experience. We don't actually know that it's going to happen, so there's doubt. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little doubt, and the enemy will use it. And so we are, we're producing Christians, if I can say, Outside of a presence or a raw encounter, they're getting faced with a line of depression, a line of anxiety, a line of fear, a line of doubt, a line of broken families, a line of broken marriages. Can, can, can you hear me? They're faced with these lines of the world that come against them and they're sitting there going, I don't know what to do. They get scared because who knows, life is actually hard. Life's tough. Is that, is that true? Life can be seriously cruel, especially when we operate out of preference. But we need to acknowledge him. We need to choose his presence. So when we get faced with a line, we can just sit there and chill. I don't have to declare anything over you. Can I tell you something? We have been told by, by, by people, external sources, no one from this church, but people have come to us and said, I just feel I need to pray for you because there are specific people that have been placed in your way to, to bring you down. There are specific people that have come to place a curse on you. I go, that's fine. You can, you can pray. Absolutely. Like, I'll receive that. But you see, <laughs> no weapon formed against me will prosper. Now, I can say that out of experience. I've experienced literal warfare where people have tried to bring me down it's been real now at that time i was going off what i thought was right because i hadn't actually experienced this so i'm saying god can you please like you need to deal with this i can't i can't do this you know what i mean why because there was doubt in me i hadn't experienced the freeing power of jesus so i said lord I can't do this. Only you can. But Jesus turned the situation around. So now when someone tells me there are people coming against you, there are people placing a curse on you, it's all good because they're not dealing with me. They're dealing with Jesus. They're dealing with Jesus. And so the more we operate out of his presence, the less the distractions become the less preference starts to take up residence because we just desire his presence. So Daniel came up out of the lines then and it said there wasn't a scratch on him. I believe there's a promise here for us that when we start diving into his presence, when we start seeking out the experience, when we start looking for the Jesus vision in our lives, no matter what we're faced with, we come out unscathed. We come out the other side and we don't stink like smoke. Come on, this is true. How many of us go through stuff and we come out the other side, Jesus is given the victory, but we come out stinking because we're still carrying the stuff we went through when Jesus is saying, hey, I dealt with that. Stop carrying because you prefer to carry the smell because it means you can guard yourself. Jesus is saying, no, 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 leave the stink behind. Choose my presence over the preference. I don't even know why I entitled this moving 
in experience. It should have been entitled presence over preference. But hey, God is good. And all the time. Oh. So what does an experience with Jesus look like for us today? Beyond just salvation, beyond making a decision, what does an experience with the rawness of Jesus look like today for you? Because my heart is that we get to a point that every Sunday we encounter Jesus together and every other day we encounter him individually. And so collectively we got to get to a point where we put aside preference and we choose presence. And that is a decision that we're going to make today. I know some of you are like, oh, I've got to pray about this. Really? Really? Like, like, what's there to pray about? Just receive him. But I'm going to get the worship team up. And I'm, I've got a song I've asked them to play for us. And I want us just to stand to our feet right now because this is where we're going to encounter Jesus individually and collectively. This is where we're going to make a choice to choose his presence over preference. And you might be here being like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know what this looks like. That's okay. We're just going to open our hearts to him. Jesus, what does a Jesus vision look like today? Just ask him, Jesus, what do you want to show me today? Jesus, what do you want to show me today? What experience with you do you want to give me today? What encounter do you want to show me today? Holy Spirit, would you speak something new to me this morning? Reveal something more to me right now. Reveal something more to me right now. Lord, I pray for Jesus' visions right now. I pray for Jesus' encounters right now, right across this place. God, I thank you that you're going to just come. That, Lord Jesus, we just acknowledge you. We just acknowledge you in this place right now. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. Holy Spirit, come right now. Just fill this place. Let the tangible presence of God be so thick and real. Jesus, I thank you for speaking to our hearts right now. I thank you for setting us free right now. Lord Jesus, give us an encounter with you. Give us an experience with you. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I trust God's just speaking to you in a new and fresh way. And if you've made a first-time decision to follow Jesus this morning, I just want to encourage you, go to our website and click on the I Decided to Follow Jesus page. Get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your testimony and how God is speaking to you in a new and fresh way. We want to be able to resource you and encourage this new journey you've started with God. And if I could just ask one more thing, if you would prayerfully consider giving to Harvest Point Church St. George to spread this message further and wider and get this message of God and His grace out there and touch more and more people for Him and His kingdom. So have a blessed week and remember God has called you to touch heaven and change it.